Russia's officially moving away from the West, they are pivoting to Asia, and this is a game changer. Now, since the 1980s, when the Soviet Union built a pipeline connecting Siberia to the West, Europe became dependent on Russian gas, and even after the Soviet collapse in 91, the West was still hooked on Russian energy for decades. And over the last 10 years, the EU's trade with Russia has always centered around oil and gas. In fact, Europe's imports of oil and gas were more than their exports to Russia. In 2021, the EU imported nearly $100 billion of Russian energy versus their total exports of only $89 billion. They actually had a trade deficit with Russia, but this helped both economies to grow. Russia sold cheap energy and got rich. Europe used this cheap energy and became even richer. And let's remember how $20 billion of Russian gas effectively powered $2 trillion worth of German manufacturing value. This analysis from Credit Suisse tells us just how leveraged Europe is when it comes to energy. But things have changed forever. Russia just announced that they are breaking away and no longer believe in trading with the West. At a G20 foreign minister's meeting in Delhi, Russia confirmed this. Their energy policy no longer includes Europe or the United States. According to Russia's Lavrov, we would not anymore rely on any partners in the West. The energy policy of Russia will be oriented towards reliable and credible partners. India and China are certainly among them. Now, such a declaration is confirmation that Russia's trading relationship with the West, Europe and the United States is now completely fractured. It is forever destroyed thanks to the sanctions and the conflict. And here are two pieces of evidence that show Russia has given up on the West as trading partners. They are taking steps to slowly dismantle and put on ice any trading relationships left. Now the first is mothballing the sabotage Nord Stream pipelines, right? We know the pipelines have been destroyed. They are unusable and Russia can't be bothered to repair them. They are going to seal up the ruptured pipelines which is a clear sign that they aren't going to be needed anytime soon. And this shows that the Nord Stream project has been a failure and Europe will be cut off from cheap Russian gas directly from the source. Now the second example is cutting away Europe's remaining supply of oil. Yes, Europe has still been buying Russian oil because EU sanctions did not target a Pacific pipeline. Now Poland has been buying 10% of their crude oil supplies from Russia through the Druze Bar pipeline. However, Russia has stopped oil flowing into Poland. And this comes a day after Warsaw delivered their first leopard tanks to Ukraine. I think we must understand how connected the land battle is to the economic front. Now the West is using its incredible resources, their money printing power to sending weapons, while Russia is using their commodities as leverage as well. Yes, this move will increase inflation in Poland, which is already at a terrible 17.2%. And what Putin is doing is sending a message. We won't supply oil and gas to the West. Your inflation crisis isn't over. And where's all this energy going to flow to? Well, it's heading towards Asia and this move is going to shift the world order eastwards, right? Specifically towards China and India. Now, let's understand that this over-dependence on European energy sales has also affected Russia. And according to Russia's finance ministry, their gas revenues declined by 42% due to lower exports to Europe. There's been a significant drop in both oil and gas revenues after the sanctions salvo. The G7 has hit Russia with price caps on both crude oil and refined products. They have banned the imports of Russian energy to Europe and this has hit their revenues. And in order to combat falling revenues, Russia is selling off their forex reserves to plunk the deficit. They sold over $1.7 billion worth of yuan and gold from their national wealth fund to cover February's deficit alone. Now, that is the short-term solution, but a long-term move is much more important. And that is Russia's historic pivot to Asia away from the West. And we know Russia has been selling their oil to China and India at huge discounts. And this state of affairs is going to continue well even after the war ends. We can see just before the war, Russia's oil exports to Europe were well above Asia, hitting almost 3 million barrels a day. But fast forward to January this year, Europe is barely clocking a million barrels. The slack has been taken up by Asia. Asia's volume has skyrocketed above 2.8 million barrels a day, showing Russia still has friends in this world. Now, what we are seeing is the oil markets effectively splitting into two. We have talked about this for many times thanks to Russia, right? Now, India and China now have access to a never-ending tap of Russian oil at a discount. Cheap oil for Asia, full price for the West. And for Russia, this kind of makes sense because the price caps and sanctions from the West aren't going to stop. 
Remember the positions both Russia and the collective West has in this economic battle, right? By defining the $60 price cap on crude, Russia is keeping inflation high in the West and this affects interest rates in the West. Now, if inflation continues to stay sticky thanks to energy prices, the Federal Reserve and the ECB could hike their economies into a recession. Jerome Powell just told Congress that the committee is strongly committed to returning inflation to its 2% objective. More rate hikes are needed because the inflation is still rate hot. It is still an inflation crisis. So if Russia keeps denying the West cheap energy, this could continue to prompt central banks to keep hiking towards a collapse. But let's understand why China and India will continue buying Russian oil. And both countries are doing it for very different reasons. Now, India's primary reason is to grow their economy and Russian oil is the key to growth. We can see in 2021, India's GDP was only $3.2 trillion, lagging behind both China and the United States. And to grow your economy fast, you need cheap inputs such as energy. And with cheap barrels of oil, India can power their growing economy and catch up with the West. And in just under a year, India has saved an estimated $4 billion by importing Russian crude. And that is a lot of money that can be channeled to public works and other domestic projects. And we can see India's import of Russian oil has skyrocketed within a matter of months. It was less than 70,000 barrels a day in March of 2022, but it has grown over 18 times to 1.3 million barrels in January. India knows the tremendous advantage of cheap energy and told the world back in November they will keep buying Russian oil. The Indian foreign minister has said time and time again, is to their advantage to deal with Russia. They also slapped back on Europe, calling out their double standards, saying it isn't right for European countries to prioritize their energy needs, but ask India to do something else. So India will continue to buy Russian oil, and Russia is happy to sell India their energy. And the reason is how Indian importers are buying their oil. Now, India buys their oil mainly on a delivered basis. It's like ordering food delivery straight to your door. This means Russia has to arrange the shipping and insurance. This allows them to capture more value across the supply chain because now they can charge India for all these services and actually earn more than a price cap of $60. As oil analysts point out, the discounted price might be $38, but Russia could be pulling in up to $65 after you account for the shipping and insurance. And the relationship between China and Russia goes beyond simple economics. Yes, China's enjoying the awesome discounts of cheap oil. Yes, they are reopening their economy. So discounted energy goes a long way. That's for sure. But what we are seeing is a geopolitical shift from the West against China. And there are just so many incidents we can point to, right? We have an American four-star general calling for a conflict by 2025. We have that shooting down of the Chinese balloon. And now we have Germany and the US warning China not to send arms to Russia or else. So China's economic support of Russia goes beyond just simple economics. They need to keep Russia afloat because if it falls, the West will shift its full attention to Beijing and China obviously doesn't want that. But will Russia ever trade with Europe again? That's the trillion dollar question. Will they sell their oil and gas to the West 10 or 20 years down the road? Now, this might shock you guys, but I believe they eventually will, but only in a way that benefits Russia and secures their own interests. And to better understand how the future of Russia-Western trade will evolve, we just need to take a look at how Russia is allocating their reserves. We know that Russia has removed their dollar holdings in their wealth fund and is moving to eliminate euros as well. And it makes total sense. If you're blocked from the SWIFT system and your assets have been frozen in the West, you see no point in holding dollars or euros anymore. And what have they replaced it with? The Chinese Yuan and gold. So there's a good chance that Russia will trade with the West in the future, but outside of the dollar or euro system. And after the war ends, Russia could tell Europe, if you want my oil, fine. You have to pay either in rubles, the Chinese Yuan, or gold. And all of these three options are entirely possible. But let's talk about gold first. Now, in its physical form, trying to exchange physical gold for oil is going to be a logistical nightmare, right? You have to pay for the shipping cost to transport the gold, then comes the insurance cost in case the gold goes missing, plus you have to assay the gold to make sure 
it's the real deal. But Russia and Iran, they are taking steps to trial stablecoin backed by gold. So in 5 to 10 years, transactions in gold could become a reality. And the second option is to accept the Russian ruble as a means of payment for oil and gas. Now, this is nothing new and Europe has kissed the ring back in 2022. And if we flash back to 9 months ago, Putin demanded the EU open ruble accounts in Gazprom Bank in order to buy Russian gas. Basically, the EU had to deposit euros into the account, which would be converted into rubles, which are then used to purchase the gas. And guess what? Europe's energy companies complied. This included companies in Germany, France, Hungary, and Italy. So this could very well become a reality once again. And the last option, which is the most painful for the West to swallow, is to buy Russian oil using the Chinese Yuan. Now, Russia could actually weaponize the Yuan by making it a currency they accept for energy sales basically the oil for yuan trade. Now, I believe the West will resist this tooth and nail because if they pay for Russian energy using the yuan, it will further promote the yuan as an international reserve currency. And this could further encourage the Saudis to accept the Chinese yuan because, hey, if Europe, if the West is paying in yuan, I could also price my oil in yuan as well to further diversify away from the dollar and that will be a disaster. But you're probably wondering, why would the West still want to buy Russian gas? After all, they have been replacing Putin's gas throughout last year, with Russian supplies reaching other 13% in November. We can also see zero flows of gas from the Nord Stream and Yamal pipeline, so it appears they have weaned themselves away from Russian energy. And does this mean that Europe has become fully self-sufficient without Russia? Well, yes and no, not really. The EU can always buy gas from the United States, the Middle East or Norway, but the big problem is the cost of energy. Is it considered a win if you're paying 30% or 40% more today compared to 24 months back? Now, the price of gas in Europe today is around 43 euros, much lower than the big spike in August, that's for sure, but still significantly higher than the pre-war levels of 20 to 30 euros. And if you don't have cheap energy, you can't grow your economy to its full potential, especially when a recession is around the corner. We just need to look at IMF's GDP projections for 2023. We can see the EU having the worst GDP growth estimates of all the advanced economies at only 0.7%. Plus, Germany is on the brink of a recession. But look at China and India's GDP estimates. China comes in at 5.2% and India is expected to grow by 6.1%, higher than the rest of the world. And why is that so? <laughs> Let me hazard a guess, guys. Maybe it's because they are getting cheap energy at 30 to 40% discount from Russia. And this growth gap is just going to continue to grow. Every year that Asia gets cheap energy from Russia, they are going to be more competitive than Europe. This is going to hollow out Europe's manufacturing base and they know it. Germany is facing a $1 trillion challenge to transition to green energy. And where is that going to come from? Where is those money going to be conjured up from? Likely from deficit spending. German industries are also in trouble because of the energy crisis. We have German manufacturing producer BASF planning to cut 2,600 jobs thanks to higher energy costs. And these are local jobs lost on German soil. As their CEO puts it, high energy prices are now putting an additional burden on profits and competitiveness in Europe. And that's why we saw Olaf Scholz running to China last November and then flying to India last month. He is heading to the countries that have access to cheap energy from Russia. It's not a coincidence. He knows that the modern economy today still runs on oil and gas. And without access to cheap energy, you can't be competitive in today's market. And if Germany is paying 30% more, while India and China, they are paying 30% less, this gap is unsustainable for German industries. They will be hollowed out eventually. So let's realize the impact of Russia's pivot away from the West towards Asia. And the longer Europe is cut off from cheap Russian energy, they'll have to pay lots more to ship LNG from Qatar or the United States for their energy supply. And it's not just Russia whose energy is flowing to China and India. Saudi Arabia's oil is also flowing there with China being their biggest customers. And this is what happens when you declare war on the fossil fuels and keep telling the world that the future is green, right? The Saudis know the West won't be good long-term customers, so they are pivoting towards Asia as well. This means the West is now left with a smaller amount of supply in the international markets. This means higher energy prices for importers in the United States and Europe versus Asia. And that's why sooner or later, the West will have to trade with Russia once again for oil and gas. 
but this time it could be fully on Russia's terms. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Will Russia ever trade with Europe again? Will China and India grow faster than the West? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.